Hey guys, welcome to River Park, and thanks for joining our on-demand worship experience. What you're about to watch was recorded at our most recent live experience. If you want to catch us the next time we're live, you can join us on Sunday mornings at 9.45 a.m. If you're not connected yet, please click the Get Connected button so that you can share a little bit of information about yourself and we can get to know you a little bit better. We hope this experience blesses you, and thanks again for joining us today. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to, to River, River Park. Park. To, to River, River Park. Park. To River Park. Hey, River Park. Welcome to another online experience. We are so happy that you're joining us today. We're going to have a little bit more of a stripped down experience as we honor our government mandates to stay home and we keep our family safe. So no matter where you're joining us today, may it be on your mobile device, your computer, or your tablet, thanks for joining us. If you have kids, feel free to check out our River Park app where we have some fantastic kids experiences that our kids team has worked so hard to put together. While we may not be together face to face, we still have unity. We will continue to gather on our computers and our mobile devices and spend time together. We will not be separated so easily. We are one church. We just have many locations. Pastor's going to give us the great word. We're going to hear some great worship today. But I first want you to allow this opportunity to get rid of any distractions and allow the Holy Spirit into your home. God wants to meet you right where you are. Our pastor and prayer team are here live to answer any of your prayer requests that you may have and pray with you in this very moment. So feel free to comment with any needs that you may have. So now I'm going to hand this over to the worship team and we're going to have a fantastic time of worship. God wants to meet with you. So listen to what he has to say to you today. Thanks, River Park. Welcome to River Park, everybody. Let's worship together. Come on.
worship with you again this weekend. I just want to encourage you to set aside some time for Jesus this morning and let his presence come in. God, we love you so much. We're so thankful for your presence that you would meet us right here as we worship you.
want to thank you so much for worshiping with us today. And we just want to savor this moment in the presence of the Lord as we wrap up our worship time. Um, when we gather together, even though it's digitally right now, and, and we know all of us are watching on screens from around our city and the state and maybe even the world this morning, uh, we just believe that when the body of Christ gathers and worships together, that the words we're saying this morning are more than just music. Um, these are more than songs. They are a, a tangible way for us to reach out and touch God together and for Him to reach down into the midst of the things that we're facing and going through this week and to touch us in our lives as well. So let me just pray for you as we wrap up our time of worship this morning. Father, I thank you for your people who have gathered today in homes all around the world. <laughs> and we're just so honored and grateful that we can worship you together. Um, we give you thanks for the, the evident presence that we feel that you're with us this morning. Um, and we give you thanks for the life and the hope and the peace and even the joy that we have in you. We believe the words of the song that we just sang together. You surround us, Lord, and we are never alone. And so we lean into that now, and we trust that now, and we give you thanks for your grace and for your goodness that's with us as we walk forward into a new week. In Jesus' name we pray all of this. Amen. Man. Thank you guys so much for worshiping with us today. Uh, River Park family, we're delighted as always to have you with us. And to all of our guests who may be tuning in for the very first time, we're so honored you chose to join us today. We're going to move into a time of giving right now, and we're going to continue to worship the Lord uh, in that way. There's three ways that you can give and contribute if you'd like to do so. Um, you can visit our website, riverpark.net, and click Give. Secondly, you can just text the amount that you'd like to contribute to 84321, and then just follow the steps there on your screen. And lastly, you can give through our River Park app, and that's a fantastic and easy way to do it. It makes it super simple. Guys, we're so grateful for your generosity in your hearts in giving. Um, it's just been such an encouragement to us in this time of crisis and turmoil around the world to see our River Park family be so faithful and committed and strong and generous. Uh, you guys are truly amazing, and we're grateful for each one of you. Thank you so much for giving today. We're going to move into the scriptures now, um, and we know that Pastor Mark has a fantastic teaching, as always, prepared for you. Just invite you to open your hearts and minds right now, and let's see what God wants to speak to us today from His Word. God bless you guys. Hey, my friends, thank you for letting us in your home today. Thank you, Jeremy, for bringing us to this spot where I'm about to share with you some information that's going to help you discover some new things. Speaking of discovery, at the end of this message today, I'm going to invite you to become part of our Discover Sessions. If you're not part of a church family somewhere, we want you to join ours. We want you to be part of us. And the way you do that is through Discover Sessions. So hang with me to the end here. Right now, put your seatbelt on and let's Let's go. Let's talk about life better, our life to the max, part four. John 10, verse 10. A thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Now, maybe for you it's hard to focus on the last part, this last part that talks about abundant life. And the reason it's difficult is because you feel like you're something has been stolen from you, something has destroyed you, killed you, you're focused on Satan's job description, his purpose, the, the battle that he has fought to get your life. And so you don't see the good news, and that is the abundance. So I hope before this is over, you can get the focus off of what's been taken from you and realize that Jesus came to give you life better. Now, maybe it's hard for you to see this, and in this quarantine, when we've been alone in this aloneness, 
loneliness, it's so easy to feel lonely. And here's the way it works. We get inundated with our problems, so we become isolated from our normal support system. Then, you know what happens? We get focused on preservation, self-preservation. After all, isn't that the most logical thing to do is to focus on me, myself, and I? If you haven't figured that out, that's all the same person, and it happens to be you. No, in fact, this further complicates things because God said it isn't good for you to be alone. So guess what? You shouldn't be. That should never be the case. I'm about to introduce to you four of the newest best friends. You're going to be best buds from here on. I mean, you guys are going to be tight because they're about to teach you about decision making. There was a time in Israel's history when there was such hard times that the entire economy was broke down completely. People were starving to death and they resorted to cannibalism. Yes, that's, that's when people start eating their own kind. There was an incredible dramatic turning point that changed everything. In fact, it changed the course of history. There were four lepers involved. These men had no idea at the time of their decision making that they were not only only about to change the course of their world, but they were also going to be an incredible example for people to look at for years to come on uh, how to make decisions. What you're about to find is that there's a simple decision in decision making. I know I have your attention there. Here it is. The more options, the more difficult. The less options, the easier the decision. Let me, let me pause you for a minute and just give you an analogy. Uh, suppose that you say to someone, um, what do you want most? And they tell you what they want, but then under a different circumstances, they tell you something different. For instance, have you ever seen a child that uh, a toy or a piece of candy have, has been taken away from him or her by a parent? And that little child will cry so hard that it starts, what, as a kid, we used to call it snubbing for your breath. It's like you can't get your breath. And, and up to that point, what that child wanted most was that toy or that candy. But guess what they want now? They want their breath. So you take other options away, and they zero in. It's easy to make a decision. So if you could ask them, and they could communicate properly, what do you want now? They would say, I want my breath. So the bottom line is, the more options, the more difficult. The less options, the easier the decision. You should write that down somewhere. For example, in the 1940s, the first McDonald's was, was built in San Bernardino, California. In 1960, the hot apple pie came along. Somewhere around 1968 was the quarter pounder. 1972 or 71 was the Big Mac, or maybe they're in reverse order. Those two burgers were introduced. Guess what? My first introduction to the Golden Arches, I was just a kid. And when I walked in, I told them what I wanted. Before I could get my money out of my pocket, they had my bag sitting on the counter, and I was served this simple but efficient lunch, uh, dinner, whatever it was. It doesn't matter. It was quick and easy because it was simple. They were quick. I was served fast food for the first time because the options were simple. Now, the most inconvenient thing in our world these days is decision-making. In a world of convenience, we get bogged down because we have so many options. Now, don't make me talk about Baskin Robbins when they don't just have one or two flavors. They've got, what is it, 31 flavors? So I think it's important that we look at ourselves and our options during this time of quarantine. In fact, think about, with, about this with me for a minute. Create some what if we simplified scenarios. What if in my life right now, I simplified some things? Ask yourself that question. According to earlylearningindustry.com, the key to making good decisions is weighing the negative against the positive. They claim, quote, usually when we make any decision, the result probably is either positive or negative. So for effective decision making, a person must weigh the positives and the negative of each one and consider the alternatives. In the case of our quarantine now, we don't have a whole lot of options, so it makes us easier to decide what we're going to do. I'm sure you've noticed that in your homes and in your shopping and all that. Sometimes you take what you can get. I know my wife the other day ordered a small coffee. 
They didn't have that. They gave us this. We're going to have coffee uh, until Jesus comes back. Now, I know that may be tomorrow, and then someone else will get the coffee. But whatever, whenever we come up with any dilemma, we need to understand the problem by examining it in detail and discussing it with experienced people. Simply put, correct decision-making is the process of choosing the best alternative for solving any sort of issue. Alternatives prescribe how correct decisions are made. Now, with this in mind, I want to take you to your new best buds. These people who are in the middle of the worst famine in the world that the world has ever experienced, and they have to navigate through that. These people are handicapped to a sense, and because they have this severe skin disease. Second Kings chapter 7, beginning in verse 3. Four men with a skin disease were at the entrance to the gate. They said to each other, why just sit here until we die? If we say, let's go into the city, we will die there because the famine is in the city. But if we sit here, we will also die. So now, come on, let's go to the Armeans camp. If they let us live, we will live. If they kill us, we will die. I'm so glad that all four of them had a measure of optimism because the worst thing that can happen is to validate a pessimist. Someone that says you can never do that, that, that will never get accomplished, we'll never get out of this quarantine. They're always throwing those scenarios out there that they think they're the authority on that. We will never, and they're, they're probably the people that we say they say. Well, I think it's a naysay, and those are the pessimists. The problem with those kind of people is if anything ever comes true that they said, then all of a sudden they become a prophet, and they are fulfilling their own prophecy. In fact, uh, because their damning prophecy is fulfilled, it just validates and puts wind beneath all their wings, and they say these famous words, I told you so. And you hate to hear that. I know you do. So these four lepers, these guys with a skin disease, as the new translations say, they give us three options. And here's the options. We can sit here and die. We can go to the city and die. Or we can go to the Armean camp and we may die. But they may let us live. Again, let me go over them again. We can sit and die. We can go and die. We can go and do something that might not amount to a hill of beans and still die. Now, I'm laughing not because this is humorous, but because it's so incredibly true. We narrow ourselves down in this little, these little choice boxes. I die if I sit here. I die if I go somewhere. I die if I go somewhere to change. So either way, it's the way we think. It's, it's, how, it's how we roll. And so I love it when a maybe turns into I told you so. I, in a good way instead of the other way, I told you so in a negative way. Seriously. I think for the first time in a long time, the church is feeling the isolation that a lost and rejected person feels. And I want to talk to you about this a minute, because after all, the contributing factors, contributing factors to the passion of the Christ was that, as the prophet said, get this, he felt our infirmities. In other words, it was not just something that he knew. When the prophet spoke of Christ in the New Testament, and he says he felt, in other words, it was an emotional contact that the Father had with man. And, and of course, Jesus came to this earth to provide those feelings for us. So don't you think that during these circumstances that we are in right now, that what you're feeling feels like what you felt before you came to know Jesus? Sometimes I think we have a hard time relating because we've forgotten what it felt like with nothing but bad options. And there's a lot of you listening to me right now that you feel all you have are bad options. And as the church, those of you that are in the body of Christ, I want you to understand that you haven't always thought the way you think now. You haven't always had that mind of Christ as Paul uh, calls it. So there are, there are some very good news. There is some very good news about the feelings that often prompt our faith. Now, sometimes there is no better place to be than a place of desperation. 
in fact, if I just say the word desperation and desperate, you go back to that picture of that kid trying to catch his breath. It's, it's like, I have to have it. And so often, uh, we, we, when we're trying to find our faith, when we're at that place of not being able to find anything, the only thing we can find is faith. Well, what is that? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that you cannot see. So even then, it's hard to prove that we have it. The only way we know we have it is something has to happen. So when you find in this point of desperation that the things and the options haven't worked for you, then you are at a place of desperation. Guess what? You can finally be set free because the things that you've always depended on, that job, that money, that relationship, they were all good for you, at least in your mind. You never know until all that's gone if they were best for you. In times like these, we have an opportunity to assess the difference between good and best. Now, here's the way it works. Usual circumstances bring a certain amount of comfort. Unusual circumstances bring a certain amount of challenges. The usual ones, even if they are not ideal, at least we know what to expect. We call it familiar territory. But there is something powerful and liberating when you come to the place of desperation and you realize then and there that, and you even confess, if I stay here, I die. Now, we have a job we hate. We have a life that's monotonous. We have friends that we don't trust. We have things that we don't even use. And that's the way life rolls. We've never had to adjust or do anything up until now about any of these things because we never have been at risk. They never have been at risk. Until now, we need to just keep on existing. That's what we tell ourselves, and existing and existing. But that has all changed. It takes an unusual circumstance that essentially frees us to explore our options. It brings us to the point that we realize that we don't have anything to lose and everything to gain. In times like these, we make decisions to survive or thrive. Notice in verse 5. Notice in verse 5, down from that same chapter in 2 Kings chapter 7. The Bible says that there's, it indicates that there's something that God will not cause until you decide to surrender. What do you surrender? Everything. God's not a God of giving you options on what you can let go of and what you can keep. Here's what they discovered when they surrendered to go, to do something different. Verse 5, so the diseased men got up at twilight to go to the Armenians' camp. And when they came to the camp's edge, they discovered that there was not a single man there for the Lord had caused, get that word caused, the Armenian camp to hear the sound of chariots, horses, and a great army. And the Armenians had said to each other, the king of Israel must have hired kings of the Hittites and the kings of Egypt to attack us. So they had gotten up and fled at twilight abandoning their tents, their horses, and their donkeys. The Bible says the camp was intact and they had fled for their lives. So, surrender is a little misleading to some people because this word is used mostly in a context of giving, to, giving up to an enemy. In this case, surrender is used in the context of making sure that they gave all in. We've got nothing to lose. And when they did that, God caused some things to happen. Could it be that God is waiting on your total surrender to cause something in front of you to happen that's bigger than anything you can imagine? We often attempt to live in this famine of our life when we could be lavished with the favor of God. It's important that we get that. Look at verse 8. When these men came to the edge of the camp, they went into a tent to eat and drink. They were Pick, they picked up silver and gold and clothing and went off and hid themselves. They, they came back and entered another tent, picked up some things and hid them. Then they said to each other, we're not doing what is right. This is, in other words, this is not the right thing. Today is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until morning light, our sin will catch up with us. Let's go tell the king's household. So they are highly motivated. You hear me? They are, as they say here in the south, they are fired up. That's fired up. So you can make this all about you. They chose not to. Or you can make it all about him working through you to help others. 
Uh, years ago, I was learning to fly, and after I had gotten my license, I was doing a rather long flight from another city back into our city. My panel went out. I had no lights. I had a flashlight trying to read my gauges. It was, it was, it was quite a moment, moments of fear. And when I left that major city, one of the hardest things to do was go into the dark to look for more light. Yet I did. I knew that my direction pointed me south, actually southwest to be exact, and I was trying to get back to my city. I can't describe to you the exhilarating feeling when I saw the runway of my hometown in sight. And I saw those lights that lined on each side of that runway that was directing me home. What you find in times of aloneness, in times of decision making, in times when your options are less, you want to look for places of light and life. When Jesus says in 1010 of John that he is abundant life and he came to give us life more abundant, that word is, uh, is synonymous in so many ways in tandem with the word light. So that light and life is bringing you back home. So if you can see the light, you have a hope of life. So if you agreed with me to surrender the way these four men did, what could you hope for? Well, they had deliverance. They had food. This, the whole world was dying of starvation. They were eating each other's children. I'm sorry. That's, that's the plain truth of it. And because of what they accomplished, what they set out to do, instead of just sitting around, then God changed the whole complexion of the world during that time. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I want to visit the English Standard Version here just for a minute. And I, I want you to see what Paul, how he directs um, uh, the people of Corinth, and of, of, of course it's applicable to us, with his information here. Uh, if he said, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So when we talk about surrender, it sounds like giving up. We think of it in war terms, but it's not. I want you to think of it in spiritual connotation relative to the all-powerful one. I want you to think that surrender is not a giving up. It is a giving in. It is, it, it is, it's, it's knocking down all the other option. Look, Jesus is not just an option. He is the ultimate. He is, you know, Jesus talked about losing your life to find it. And the, this, this sounds like, uh, all the options are gone. It sounds like you're done. So you lose your life, but really in context in Matthew 10, 39, what he's saying is if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. That's pretty straightforward. If you, if, you hide, if you try to keep your life, if you cling to it, I love that word cling because it implies a child reaching out for something and gripping it with a death grip. He said if you cling to your life, those things that you cling, I'm going to take away from you. But if you, if you leave your life with me, if you bury your life in me, then I'm going to make sure you get to keep it. So it has to do with faith. It has to do with faith. So I'm going to ask you to agree with me concerning one simple passage of Scripture. Will you do that? Will, will you agree with me on one passage of Scripture? It has to do with your faith. God allowed something as simple as faith to be the catalyst for everything in his kingdom. I want you to get that. If you don't get anything else I said. He allowed something as simple as faith. Not only is it simple in its, its context relative to what faith is, but it's simple even in the analogy he uses about faith. He calls it as a grain of mustard seed. And so when I talk about that, I'm talking about something that is available, like your options. It's easy to get. Anybody can have it. Therefore, anybody can have it and use it for anything. So what do you think is your biggest decision right now? What is your biggest decision? You say, well, what kind of light bread did the store let me have? Or uh, do I go, I can't get paper towels, so we're going to all start using toilet paper. I don't know what your major decision is, but try to think of what your major decision is right now. And I really think you ought to focus on one. Just narrow it down to one. Now, just one, take away the other options. Get rid of them in your mind. This decision doesn't mean that you comprehend everything, 
but that you have some knowledge about the main thing. So here's the options again. I sit here and die. I go back where I came from. I die. I go somewhere new. Just maybe I die. Just maybe I live. So I'm presenting you with what I know is a definite 100% sure correct choice. But you know what? I'm not even going to expect that from you. All I'm asking for you is to explore maybe Mark is right. Here it is, stripped away from everything else with no other options. Here is that, the decision of faith. I'm not asking you to do something in order to have something, but rather to have something so you can do something. You need to write that down. That'll change your life. You see, you don't, you don't need to do anything for God. Anything that needs any grunt work, Jesus has already finished. Jesus has done all the doing so you can focus on all the having. Eternal life, that is, that's what you can have when you surrender to him. If you follow the way of faith, tonight when you go to bed, you won't have any worries because you have lost your life in his, and this life, his life, that is, will never be extinguished. History and the Bible both prove me to be right. This abundant life is life better than anything you've ever had. And just like those four men that's in our narrative here today with these horrible diseases, plenty of people are waiting on you to change so you can help change them. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Here it is, relative to your faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Must believe. Sounds simple, doesn't it? And the truth is, it's very simple. Just two things for you to do. Number one, believe that he exists. You say, well, that's easy. Watch this. If you take believe that he exists plus seek him, you will equal an, a reward. Believe that he exists, seek him, a reward's coming. Just my airplane, just the, 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 the same scenario of my airplane coming into that airport, those lights had a way of drawing me in. I believed that the city I was trying to fly into existed because I lived there. I knew it was in my mind's eye, but then all of a sudden, because I acted on what I believe, I started seeing those runway lights, and then I start seeking to get closer, and that's the image I want you to see about Jesus in your life. Don't try to understand all there is to understand about him. Just believe that he exists. Can you do that? Just believe that he exists, and then seek him. Start getting closer to him, and then the reward is around the corner for you. If you will make a decision of any kind, we'd like to help you. And we have some simple resources that we can give you immediately. That is, River Park can. There's two ways to ask for assistance from one of our pastors that are monitoring this broadcast today. Or in a more simple way is to text, now what, to 97000. Now what? That's pretty good. I mean, you think that's what the lepers were saying? Now what? Sit and die? Go and die? Maybe, and I'm, I'm hoping you put your trust because if I'm wrong, there's no big fallacy. We're all going to be great. If you're wrong and you haven't put your belief in Jesus, there's a day of reckoning. I want you to be right. I want you to believe. I want you to get close to him. And whatever your advancement is today, you're moving closer. We want to know what that looks like. And then we're going to give you, in fact, I've reviewed some of, uh, most of our material that is being released through now what 97000, and it's all information that is going to work for wherever you are. So when you do the 97000, however many zeros there are, you will immediately get resources that can help you. Join Discover Sessions, become part of this family. This is part of what seeking that I referred to a few minutes ago looks like. Then the reward. Look to God, seek to get close, and get your reward. I want, I want to not only join you in heaven, I want to join you in these kingdom efforts right now. What God is doing in the earth. River Park has this idea that if we love God, and if we love people, we think we can make a difference. And we think that that's predicated on the word of God. And you know what? We don't want to do this alone. 
We want you to come be part of our family. Again, plug in, ask for help uh, through our resources today and let us help you. And right now, if you would just pray a prayer, a simple prayer, I'm not gonna lead you in some rhetorical prayer that you may not even remember, but I want you to say something from your heart that gives God the idea that you're ready to serve him and you're ready to surrender him and you're ready to knock out all those options just like these four men with the skin disease that changed their world. You can change your world. Make a good decision today. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now. There's so many that are plugged in to this broadcast and there's so many that are hurting that we can't see them. We're not looking in their eyes, but you don't need to. You in all points was tempted as we are, as they are, and yet you did not sin. You have provided a way of escape to any situation that they might find themselves in. And I ask you to give solace, I ask you to give strength, and I ask you to give peace to them right now and let them pray a prayer of advancement toward you and seeking after you. And we're looking forward to this life better, this life more abundant. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you. Wow, that was an amazing message. Thank you so much for that, Pastor. If at any point during this experience you felt a tug on your heart from God, or maybe you met with Him for the first time, you can text the words, Now What? to 97000. We would love to give you some more information and some next steps. I promise you that we won't bug you or bother you. We just want you to feel as informed and as connected as possible at this time. So we're done with our experience today, and we are so grateful that you've joined us. But we're going to stick around for a little bit longer for a time of prayer. So if you have any prayer requests, please let us know so that we can pray with you here on the spot. So we're done. Basically, you're dismissed. <laughs> but please, if you have anything that you have a prayer need for, let us know. We love you so much, River Park. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you.